Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabalabha Kirivar Tahari Jaya Gopi Janabalabha So the Nandan Raja Janan Janana Jamuna Jai Radha Madhava Kunjab Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjab So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto. The chapter is entitled The Appearance of Varaha Dev, and text number 31. And that is chapter number 13. Chap text 31. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this is the appearance of Lord Varaha, also known as the Boar Incarnation. So this is text 31 of chapter 13. Swadam straya dratya mahim mi magnam. Sa utita sam ruche rasayaha. Tatapi daityam gadaya patantam. Sunaba Sandi Pita Tiraman Yuhu Sadamstra Yodritya Mahima Nimagnam Sautita Sam Ruche Rasayaha Atrapidaityam gataya patantam Sunaba sandi pititi virman yuhu Swadamstrayodritya mahim nimagnam Sautita samruches rasayanaha Tapi daityam gadaya patantam 
Sunna Basandi Piti Tivra Manuho. Mataji, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, try it. Swadamstraya, by his own tusks, Udritya, raising, Mahim, the earth, Nimagnam, submerged, Sa, he, Utita, get up, Samruruche, appeared very splendid. Rasaya, from the water, Tatra, there, Api, also, Daityam, unto the demon, Kadaya, with the club, Apantantam, rushing towards him, Sunaba, the wheel of Krishna, Sandipita, Glowing, Tivra, Tivra. Fe fierce, fierce. Manyahu, anger. Okay, so Lord Bor very easily took the earth on his tusks and got up out of the water. Thus he appeared very splendid. Then, his anger glowing like the Sudarshan wheel, he immediately killed the demon Hiranyaksha, although he tried to fight with the Lord. Mm. I'll read it again. Lord Bar very easily took up the earth on his tusk and got out of the water. Thus he appeared very splendid. Then his anger, like the Sudarshan wheel, he immediately killed the demon Hiranyaksha, although he tried to fight with the Lord. Purport. <coughs> According to Srila Jiva Goswami, the Vedic literatures describe the incarnation of the Lord Varaha bore in two different devastations, namely the Chakshusha devastation and the Swayambhuva devastation. 
This particular appearance of the Boar Incarnation actually took place in the Swayambhuva devastation when all the planets other than the higher ones, Jhana, Marha, and Satya, merged into the water of devastation. This particular incarnation of the Boar was seen by the inhabitants of the planets mentioned above. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur suggests that the sage Maitreya amalgamated both the Boar incarnations in different devastations and summarized them in his description to Vidura. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksun Bilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadati Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavadi Pacharini Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubischa Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita Nam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So in, in Prabhupada's lecture, he takes the opportunity to describe all the ten incarnations that fall within the category of the Leela incarnation. And these are Leela incarnations, the Lord's particular manifestations in order for pastimes. And so here, of course, this was one of the first demons. We have the manifestations of Haranyaksha and Haranyakashipu. And we have, um, uh, Ra uh, you know, Ravana and Kumbhakarna. Then we have Dantravarka and Shishupal, the three manifestations of Jai and Vijay. So this Aranyaksha is one of the foremost. And uh, here it's mentioned that uh, um, there was two manifestations of the Lord's appearance in this particular form. Now what needs to be clarified, and this sometimes is, maybe devotees have a clear understanding, but people in general, especially other spiritualists, they don't understand when the Lord appears in a particular form, his body is completely spiritual. He does, although he may take on a form of something in this material world, such as a, a hog or a dwarf Brahmin or a fish or, or a fierce warrior, none of these manifestations are anything to do with the material counterpart. They're all completely pure and spiritual. Now the Lord's incarnation of the boar is interesting because the Lord has accepted that particular form in order to do the work that he had to do, and that is the main job was to get the, the earth, which had been dis disturbed by this demon, Haranyaksha. He was taking so much gold out of the earth, that the earth had lost its equilibrium and fell from its orbit all the way down to the bottom of the universe, Garbodak Ocean. And it's described in different places and also here that the earth, the bottom of the ocean is not a very clean place. It's quite dirty. So a boar is known to go into dirty places. <laughs> That's one of its, you know, main places for hanging out is in dirty places, <laughs> boars. And so the Lord took the form of a boar, but he, he's never a boar, or he's never the manifestations that he takes in order to perform his pastimes. He does that to satisfy his devotee and just to exhibit his own transcendental nature. And so here, it's interesting that um, when the Lord brought the earth back out of the water, he was met by this demon, which was the cause of how the earth actually fell. Because he was so greedy 
that he kept taking more and more gold out of the earth. And even today, we hear statements coming from both secular and spiritual sources that the people are taking more and more oil from the earth, and that's also causing disturbances within the earth. And Prabhupada is saying that this, these uh, reactions with the earth disturbances are due to the drilling of the modern men today in order to exploit the earth for riches and resources. Because the earth is a living entity and it's given its position by the Lord, and it is, and so if one dis disturbs the natural order that the earth gives the earth in order for it to do its service, providing for the living entities who live upon it, then they will, just like they say, we call the earth the, one of the mothers. There are seven mothers. So a mother is a person who, who is seen as an honorable, respectable, and uh, very giving person. Someone we honor, someone we respect, and someone we know is always providing for someone else. Sometimes we say children or progeny or whatever. And so the earth is meant to provide for the living entities whatever is needed to live happily and provide for the facility to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But when there's disturbance causing, caused by the demoniac per population, which we're having right now, <laughs> going on today, then there is reactions from the mother. And just like they say, if you give your mother too much trouble, she might slap you. <laughs> so these uh, reactions of the disturbed mother come in the form of these cataclysms or what we say calamities taking place on the earth. And so here, there's, this is a severe case of the disturbance. So much so, and this demon was powerful. He was huge and very, very powerful. And so there was no limit to how he exploited the earth and the living entities on the earth also. And so now the Lord had to come and do this work. No one else could do it. The demigods weren't able to. But killing demons, the Lord doesn't have to come personally. That's just a side program. <laughs> Because Prabhupada said he can kill so many demons by just creating some material calamity and then all the demons fall inside the earth and they're all finished. <laughs> so that's not a big problem for the Lord. He just has to think about it and it, and it happens. That's his all-powerful nature. The Lord can do anything. But here he also gives pleasure to his devotees who like to see the appearance of the Lord and therefore... We see, and this is in one of the, this particular incarnation, there's so many beautiful prayers offered by the demigods and others to glorify the appearance of Lord Varahadev. And these are just, these prayers are so deep and so sweet and so full of devotion. Now, oh, this is one of the manifestations of the Lord's appearance in this world. And the Lord comes in so many manifestations of himself, his incarnations are as unlimited of, as his nature is unlimited. He's unlimited, therefore he can appear anytime, any place, anywhere. But he does, he doesn't. He appears either on schedule, by scheduled incarnations, that's also one of the chapters, scheduled incarnations. Or he might appear as an appearance of, of, of emergency in order to do some work, which the demigods cannot do. It's beyond their ability. This is one case here. The demigods are in charge of making, managing the universal affairs. But sometimes the demons become more powerful and disturb. And therefore, the demigods have to go to Lord. First, they go to Indra. Indra goes to Brahma. Brahman goes to to sway the dweep, praise to the Lord, my dear Lord, we got a problem in. The Lord says, I know about your problem, thank you for the prayers. <laughs> in other words, he hears their prayers, he appreciates their prayers, he knows what's going on. But the Lord doesn't get involved in these things unless 
he is, unless it's an emergency, and it's petitioned by the devote, just like when the Lord appeared as Krishna 5,000 years ago. Mother Earth was so disturbed by the demoniac population that um, her Mother Earth came and she appeared to, to Lord Brahma and said, you know, these demons are just too much. <laughs> They're raping the earth, they're exploiting the resources, and they're always fighting. So I need some relief. So Brahma went to the ocean of milk, swayed the dweep, stayed there with the... And in his mind, he offered prayers. The Lord could understand everything. And the Lord knew about the whole situation on earth, but he didn't come until the, the, the demigods actually made that petition. So this is also true in our present situation. When in, we might be in trouble, and, that's the, and that usually happens sometimes, <laughs> it's just like in this present condition. But the mercy of the Lord manifests is when we sincerely call out for, those, for the Lord's mercy. And that's part of our devotional life, which is the essential part, is wanting the mercy of the Lord, praying for the mercy of the Lord begging for the mercy of the Lord because the Lord's mercy is the, what we say, the final solution to all problems. <laughs> Our endeavors to change things, to make things better, are only an effort to access the Lord's mercy, but it's the Lord's mercy, or the Lord's intervention in the form of his mercy is what makes the difference. So here, also, the demigods were praying, and then, of course, they came to Lord Brahma. Brahma couldn't figure out what to do. And he started to contemplate. He was meditating. <clears throat> While he was meditating, something really strange happened. From one of his nostrils, a little tiny animal appeared. And then, it was really small, but then immediately it just started to grow. And not only did it grow, it, it grew so big it covered the whole sky. Because <laughs> Prabhupada said, even in one of his things, he said, we can't imagine how big Lord Moore was. <laughs> he was so big that the whole sky was covered by his appearance. So this is uh, the Lord. He can, he can be the Anantavastam Paramanchayantarastam. He can enter into the atom and become so small, and then he can become so big also that there's no limit to his size. This is the all-powerful nature of the Lord. Uh, just like... Sometimes Prabhupada makes this distinction that um, you have to be both sides to be great. Just like they say now, Prabhupada says, they're always trying to do something bigger and grander on the material level to, get, to become greater and greater. So um, they build one kind of plane, and so then, then they build a better plane, and then they build a building, and then they build a bigger building. So they're always trying to get bigger and better. But Prabhupada said, try to commit, let the scientists make a little insect, <laughs> smaller than the smallest, that can fly around and, you know, has its own pilot built in. <laughs> they can't do that because they don't have the uh, understanding, nor even if they attempt it, attempt it, they don't have the facility to do it. But sometimes they try. <laughs> they try to do everything. So that's what the material world is, is try to imitate the Lord, but trying to imitate the Lord is just foolishness. It's like trying to take a position that you're never qualified to take. It's just not possible. So, but when the Lord appears, everyone becomes happy. So this is the particular message of this particular presentation. Everyone becomes happy by the Lord's appearance and the devotees become relieved. Reading this section, I wasn't able to get a chance to read any of it today, but I remember that during the fight, that at one point the Lord was playing with the demon. You know, because just like a, sometimes a, a cat will surround a mouse, the mouse will be running and the cat will run right in front of the mouse. And the mouse gets scared and runs in another direction, so the cat runs and catches it in another direction. And he pushes the mouse down, and then he knocks it around a little bit. He plays with it a little. And so this was what 
Lord Bohr was doing. He was playing with the demon. And the demigods, they were more, they were very afraid. And they were thinking, oh my God, what is he doing? And now it's getting dark out. <laughs> and when they say, as the darkness continues, the demons become more powerful. So there was some prayers coming from the side. My Lord, you know, he's gonna get more powerful. Dispatch him completely now. They were, you know, they were. They had their cheerleading section going, and you know, the Lord was still having fun. <laughs> For him, it's no problem. <laughs> and then finally, uh, even the part where they're fighting, <coughs> and the, the the demon lost his club, so the Lord gave him his club back. <laughs> here, here, you can uh, try again. <laughs> So the demigods didn't like any of that. You know? <laughs> They're one-sided. They want to see everything go in one direction. But you know, when Krishna does things, he does it according to how he wants to do it. No one can tell him what to do or judge why he does it in the way he does. So then finally, the Lord said, all right, I guess the play is over. So he just took his hand and <laughs> finished. <laughs> Slapped him on the ear, behind the ear, it said. And he just tumbled down, and that was it. <laughs> it was like he it was like effortless, you know. You know, sometimes, you know, like when he came to kill, you know, Harani Kasipu, that was a big mess, you know. <laughs> he uprooted his intestines, where as a garland took his heart and threw it in a different direction. And you know, just and then he just destroyed all of Harani Kasipu's followers. It was a big fight. So it looked, I mean, that would, that would be a good motion picture. But this one, I mean, the fight was interesting, but then at the end, ching, <laughs> that was it. So the devotees can take heart, understanding that we take shelter of the Lord, Raki Krishna Mori K Mori Krishna Raki K. This is a very essential principle for devotees to learn. <clears throat> that when the Lord wants to kill, no one can protect, and if the Lord wants to protect, no one can kill. And the Lord does break his promise, which he did in the case of Bhishma Dev, in order to uh, save Arjuna. He broke his promise. He actually fought when he just said he wasn't going to fight. So he has a higher principle, and that higher, that higher principle is to give protection to his devotees. So the devotees are always in the position to receive the mercy of the protective mercy of the Lord, but the, still the devotees have to take shelter of the Lord. We can't expect the Lord to give us the mercy unless we really want it. But that's part of getting the mercy. He does that also, but the full mercy comes when we really want it. The Lord wants to see how much we want to depend on Him, and that's the whole process of Krishna consciousness. The whole process of Krishna consciousness is not about developing so many abilities to do things. These are nice, they're helpful, and they also are good for engaging in devotional service. But the essence of our success in Krishna consciousness is how much we depend on Krishna. That is our, that is our success, how much we depend on him, pray for his dependence, his mercy, his direction, that our, becomes our success. <clears throat> and you see, when devotees do that, wonderful things happen. Wonderful things happen. Um, <clears throat> a devotee has no ability to do something, but if they pray, all of a sudden the ability comes. A devotee will forget something, and they'll, they'll think of Krishna, and Krishna will say, well, Sarvasitya Hamra Disani Visto. He helps you remember, he helps you forget, he helps you understand. Everything comes from the mercy of the Lord. <clears throat> but the non-devotees, they, de they depend on their own efforts to do whatever they want to do or become whatever they want to try to become. <clears throat> but the devotees always depend on the Lord. So these pastimes of the Lord help the devotees to really appreciate how merciful the Lord is that when Things get beyond the norm, we might say, <clears throat> to use a, just say, a cliche. He comes <laughs> to, to uh, rectify the situation. 
because <clears throat> one of the things he says personally is that when religious principles go too far down, jai shisi pancha tattva ki jai. <clears throat> when religious principles go too far down, then the Lord actually comes to relieve the world, earth of that irreligion and to remove those who are causing that irreligion. So in one lecture, Srila Prabhupada's talking about that in this age we are in now, the demons are only increasing. This was in 1972, he's giving a lecture. He said the demons are only increasing in this age. So you can expect more and more harassment from demons as time goes on. But then he said, but the Lord always comes to protect. But then he said, but he's already come. <laughs> He's already here. We don't have to wait for his incarnation. He's already come. Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna Avatar. Nama Hoite Haya Sarva Jagat Nistaral. He comes in his name. So this name is just as powerful as any of the manifestations of the Lord. <clears throat> or even, it even acts as more powerful because as it says, Nija Sarva Shakti. <clears throat> His name ha includes all of his qualities, all of his pastimes, all of his forms, all of his, everything that is made up of the absolute truth is found within the power of Krishna's name. It's hard to conceive that. In fact, it's not possible to conceive it, but it's there. And if we chant, the, whole, the Lord knowing that this name is the complete manifestation of the Lord in sound, then we understand we're approaching the, 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 we're approaching the absolute principle of full mercy. Therefore, in this age, Kali Kaler, Nama Rupa, Krishna, well, in this age, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Eva Kevalo, Kalon Nasteva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva. Gatir Anyata. So this point, this point is being made and spoken. This is from the Brihat Naradiya Purana, but it was spoken by Lord Chaitanya himself, just to give emphasis to this verse. How important it is for us to fully take shelter of Krishna in the form of his name. And especially now, devotees we see around the world will worry about what's going to happen now with the, all the events that are unfolding on the secular society and how it's uh, overflowing into the devotional communities. All we have to do is take shelter of Krishna's name in a serious way, in a congregational way, in a more, uh, with more faith and with, with more enthusiasm. The holy name is everything. Yeah, there's that beautiful prayer by one can't remember his name. His name is mentioned, but sometimes they say the prayer is anonymous. It mentions that the holy name of Sri Hari is all that be. The holy name of Sri Hari is all that be. So in these eight verses sung in glorification of the holy name, the same line is there at the end that everything is there in Krishna's name. And so, and when Krishna comes in other forms, and he does it for a particular purpose. But in this age, there's too many demons. This is the age of demons. And so to make it easy, he came in one complete form, the holy name. And he came to deliver it himself in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so they actually can say in this age there's two manifestations of the Lord, two incarnations. And the third incarnation, which is also considered, and that's Archa Vigraha incarnation, he comes in the form of his deities also. And that is also incarnation. So we have a lot of mercy available through his deity, through the Lord personally as he directs the Sankirtan movement and through Krishna himself in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So the mercy of the Lord is readily available in the form of Krishna's holy name. But we're reading about this wonderful pastime here. It says that when the Lord picked up the earth, he touched the earth. And when he touched the earth with his tusks, 
And you can imagine, Prabhupada said, you can imagine how big his tusks were. <laughs> because he held the earth on a, on a pair of tusks. So how big is the earth? Well, you know, it's pretty big <laughs> compared to objects. So that's a, that was an indication of how big the tusk was. And then when he touched the earth, he actually impregnated her, and a child later appeared, and that his name was Nara, Naraka. Nar, Nar, Naraka. Yeah, well, that's, that was later he became a Sura. <laughs> Oh, he was a nice guy when he was born. <laughs> he was born, his father was the Lord and his mother was the earth, but he got into bad association. <laughs> and then he became Asura, and he later was known as Bomasura. So, yeah, and then Krishna killed his own son later on. <laughs> so, Prabhupada said he's not partial. <laughs> if, if someone who is his enemy surrenders to him, such as apparently we're not an enemy, but Vibhishan, Vibhishan was on the side of, was the born in a Rakshasha family, but because he surrendered to Lord Ram, the Ram, Ram gave him all protection and all care. And Naraka, he was born in the family, but still the Lord decided, decided that he, you know, he was, he was causing too much of a nuisance, and just, so he killed him. So the Lord is not partial. He's not partial, he acts equally according to how one approaches him. Jayatam mam prapadyante tamstataiva pajami. So if you're wondering what's wrong in your devotional service, it's you. <laughs> you're the problem. <laughs> because it's a matter of approaching the Lord, that's all. Through our chanting, through our service, and through, our, of course, prayers, or chanting is also prayer. Want to change whatever is happening to us because we're not liking it or it's not going the way we should be or whatever. Just change how you approach the Lord, that's all. Approach Him with humility, with, with sincere prayer. My dear Lord, your mercy is, as, as uh, Bilba Munga Thakur says, my dear Lord, with your mercy, what is the use of others? And without your mercy, what is the use of others? In other words, with the Lord's mercy comes the full mercy. And anybody else who is outside of that, what can they do? They can't help. If they're empowered by the Lord, then they can help. But otherwise, the, that prayer is indicating that everything is coming from the Lord. So we, and then of course, when he touched the earth, he, he also, he shook his body because he, he was wet, so he wanted to dry himself off, so he just did a little, you know, kind of like, we, sometimes we dance like that. <laughs> he dances like that, he just kind of shakes around. But he's, you know, to watch him dance is so nice because he's always smiling when he's dancing. There's some people that dance and it's like, Oh my God, I can't wait till I have to stop. <laughs> I'm dancing because they're making me. <laughs> he dances very nice, but he has this unique, it's like a, a cowherd boy who's looking for some prashadam at the same time. <laughs> That's a compliment. Because <laughs> cowherd boys are always, associating with Krishna when they're eating prasad, so it's, it's natural. <laughs> so, yeah, but then when he shook his body, the, some of the hairs off his body fell onto the earth, and they grew as kusa grass, which is a kind of grass. And I saw kusa grass. We had some in our farm in, um, in uh, Mumbai. Uh, the devotees got a farm now, which is Govardhan Echo Village, but before that they had another farm. And one of the reasons they left is because there was too much crusa grass there. <laughs> because it's sharp. It's razor sharp. And you have to be careful. You can cut your finger on this grass. It's got a nice thin point at the top, but the grass goes like that. So these were, these actually grew 
as a result of the Lord shaking his body, the hairs of his body fell on earth and later came into Kusagra. So that's interesting. And that they use that also in worship ceremonies. You, you sometimes you see Kusagras. I think Devendra, he knows he uses it sometimes. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if if there's any uh, comments or questions. Yes, Maharaj. According to our commentators, when we're when they're talking about the earth and not talking about this little place that we think is the earth, but they're actually talking about Jam uh, Bumandala. Can you describe more? Yeah, this is Vishwanath Chakravati Thakura's commentary. Uh, what do you, what, what's, what is, give, it, give the comparison between Bumandala well, and right, the Earth. Well, right now we think we're on the Earth, which we are. I mean, obviously we're on something called the Earth, mm. which is actually part of Bard Varsha, mm. which is a little, one of the nine Varshas in Jambudweep, which is the smallest of all the Dweepas surrounding Mount Meru. So how big, and then, so what are we sitting on now? A big, something much bigger than what we know? Well, however we conceive of it, but Jambudweep, the same size of Jambudweep is the ocean of salt. So if Jambudweep is 100,000 yojanas across, mm -hmm. then the ocean of salt is 100,000 yojanas across also. And then twice as big as that is the next one is Plaksha Dweep. Right. And then there's an ocean of, there's different oceans succeeding. Samanta Dweep, uh, Simha, Simha Dweep, and other Dweepas where there's an ocean of yogurt, an ocean of milk, ghee. an ocean of ghee. And each one is successively two times bigger than the other one. It's interesting, I just read that verse too. It's in the fifth canto, right? Yes. Yeah, I gave a class on that just recently. <laughs> I'm just reading your mind, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can be, a yojana is eight miles. So 100,000 yojana is 800,000 miles. So, so uh, Bumanala is approximately two billion miles across, mm -hmm. which is a long way to run or to walk. Yeah, there's not too many Olympic runners that try that one. <laughs> okay, so Earth is Bumandala, and therefore what he picked up was something bigger than what we conceive of. <laughs> that we can accept, yeah. It's all based on Shastra. Well, the thing is that what are we trying to say is God is great. <clears throat> his creation is great, but he's even greater than his creation. Because not only the creation is so unbelievable, unlimitedly unbelievable, but he is he way beyond that. And what to speak of the manifestation, which is not created, the spiritual world how diverse and how, you know, the one of just one Vaikuntha planet is, I don't know, I think there's, I don't know if there's any measurement given, but it's just unbelievably huge. All the, all the material universes could fit into one Vaikuntha yeah. planet. Mm -hmm. And all the Vaikuntha planets fit into Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> and all the, and everything fits on the tip of Krishna's finger when he holds them. <laughs> go over downhill <laughs> but the point is that people talk about greatness but they don't really use the term in a in a understandable way so we can understand how that greatness really means to describe greatness in detail so these are some of the features of the Lord's greatness <clears throat> What was Prabhupada's greatness? I mean, he, I mean, so many things about Prabhupada that was that he did were great. But what was the most amazing thing that he did? That is, the greatness of his greatness. 
<laughs> he turned hippies into happies. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> he turned us into something different than what we used to be. <laughs> and we're st it's still in the process, though, <laughs> for some of us. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, it's unlimited. <laughs> Let's hopefully you complete the process by the time you finish this life so you don't have to continue the process next life. Yeah, so that's the whole thing. So yeah, that's Prabhupada's greatness. That, mm, he took people who were meat eaters and sex mongers, drunkards, gang people who were, you know, members of violent gangs and actually made them gentle. <laughs> Amazing. That's that's greatness. That's that's really greatness. Okay. Anything else? Uddhava Mitra, you look like you got a question formulating there. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki. Varaha Dev Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Kija. Yeah.